Complete overview of smart console. Hello everyone, welcome to the checkpoint firewall training series. In this section of the training, we will go ahead and explore smart console. We will go through almost all of the features that smart console offers us. However, please do keep in mind that I will not be able to test every feature that we go through in the smart console because I will be explaining almost all the features and all the different sections that smart console has therefore I will only be able to explore and explain you the function of many of the features in the smart console so this is my topology as you can see that I have my headquarter site I have my site 1 and site 2 and I have three gateways this is my headquarter gateway checkpoint headquarter this is my gateway number two that's in site one and I have another gateway in site two that are all connected to the public network and each one has its own private network and I have my policy management server here so I will use this policy management server or management server and I will go ahead and add all these three gateways to my management server and I will use my PC this host PC which is having an address of 226 from this range and I will go ahead smart console to this management server and proceed on configuring all these three gateways so I just have added all these three gateways and as well as the management server in ng and I have no configuration whatsoever in any one of these three gateways and even the management server they do not even have IP addresses so we will go ahead and boot them we will go ahead and configure the IP addresses and then add them to the management server so let's go ahead and boot these devices let me also clear the screen they will indeed take a little time so I'll go ahead pause and resume once they are booted welcome back everyone so the devices have boot up let's go ahead and assign IP addresses to all of them and then we will go and do the configuration wizard of all three gateways and as well as the management server so I will access them using secure CRT so first is the management server so I'll assign IP address of 192.168.11.11 to the ETH0 interface. So you, the username is admin, the password is admin123. So I'll set the IP address for the ETH0 interface. So ETH0 IPv4 11.11. .11. With a mask of 24 I will assign IP to CPHQ admin admin123 set interface it is 0 and it is 11222 I will also assign IP address to ETH1 interface which is 291.33.222 with a mask of 24 and admin admin123 cp site 1 so set interface et0 ipv4 it's 291.33.222 which is this interface with a prefix length of 24 and 
it is one interface which is 1.1 1 .1. the inside network this interface and cp side 2 admin admin 123 and uh, set interface it is 0 pv4 200 9133 200 which is the ETH0 interface and 24 and interface ETH1 which is in the subnet of 2 2.1 and 24 so I will go ahead and access my management server and uh, CPHQ uh, gateway from this PC and I'll proceed with the configuration wizard uh, 11 and the other one is 11 so did I 11 yeah it just came so admin admin one two three So I'm going to proceed with the Gaia configuration visit, which is the first time that we are adding this device. So proceed, continue. You know all these stuff. So I'll quickly go through them. So the gateway is 192.168 for the policy management server. It is 11.222. For all this internal network of headquarter, this is the gateway address so next uh, I don't have ETH1 interface next so this is CP policy management server uh, the DNS that I will assign is I all already have an internal domain and DNS server which is the uh, motosim.com uh, domain and this is the domain controller so I'll point all all the HQ uh, nodes or hosts for the DNS, I will point them to uh, to my internal Active Directory and DNS server, and for the site one and site two as well for their uh, name resolution. So I don't have second and third. Next and time zone. Next. Next so here I only need to check the security management not the gateway so I'll say next next who should be able to access this via GUI next anyone next and finished yes so I'm skipping them because uh, you know them from the previous sessions so admin admin one two three we have gone th through the, this wizard many many times so next and the ad the gateway here is for this uh, a gateway or firewall the gateway is this address which is 291.33 which is my service provider and it is 291.33.1 next so eth1 interface i guess i did assign the address there i don't know why it didn't took it but let's go ahead and do it again so 291.33 and it is 222 which is this interface 222 next Mm, it is checkpoint headquarter DNS is pointing once again to my internal DNS server next time zone next next so I don't want to check the security management but this time I only will check the security gateway next and the key is test one two three 
Sikki for the trust relationship to be created with the management server so I will let this go and I will because I don't have any rule going on here right now no policy rule so that I can be able to access my site 1 and site 2 gateway what I will do is I will temporarily use this uh, PC or device to access them go, uh, via browser and do the Gaia configuration wizard so it is the username for this is test123 I think I already have an IP address here assigned so I think I should be able to reach it Bank 291.33 and 100. I am unable to ping it. Uh, let me check the IP addresses. Oops, I think I made a mistake here. It's not 222, it's uh, uh, 100. So set interface, uh, ETH0, EV4, it's 291, 33, 100, with a mask of 24. Yeah, it's uh, able to reach now. So HTTP S. 291, 33, and 100. Let me check if I'm able to reach the 200. Yeah, I can reach 200, this gateway. Side 2. So, I will access that as well. 200. Which is 200. So I'm able to access both the site one and site two gateways. Admin, admin one two three. Next, next, the gateway is two hundred ninety one thirty three one. My service wire. Next. In the ETH1 interface IP is 1.1 24 next and the host name is CP site 1 and the dns is 11.10 next next and i don't want to check the security management next and the sec key is test one two three next finished yes so this is site 2 admin admin 1 2 3 next Next and two hundred ninety one thirty three one. Next and the internal interface IP is two dot one two dot one, which is this subnet and this IP. 
and the mask is 255 255 2550 and the host name is cp site 2 dns is 1110 next next only the gateway security gateway next and test one two three test one two three yes so i think they will take a little time and the management server will take a little time or to boot the uh, modules and the api so that then i would be able to smart console to it so i will once again pause and resume once the configuration wizard is completed on all four ga uh, three gateways and the management server we'll come back once again so the configuration wizards are completed uh, let me reduce this i hope you are able to see it and uh, let's assign an ip address to the eth2 interface uh, for my dmg on the headquarter gateway admin admin123 which is 10.0.1.0 subnet and the address is 2.2.2 let me log into the management server as well so the interface is eth2 edit i'll enable the interface and it's 10.0.1.222 and Two five five two five five zero. Okay, and uh, domain is mutasim dot com. Apply. Apply. And uh, I'll start my DMZ server as well. We may may need it later on. So I'll assign IP address to my PCs as well before I use smart console to access the management server. Why is it lagging? So the address is 1.2 and DNS is 1.10. So this is my, let's call it PC1. Okay, and connect. properties and the address is one into one six eight two dot two and 
on the DNS is eleven ten PC two and connect. So let's go ahead and use this PC and smart console to my management server. The username is admin, the password is admin123 and the IP address is 11.11. Close these. Start my domain. So if you have not uh, installed the smart console, you can download and um, install it from the management server through the uh, web GUI interface. So this is the interface of the smart console. Um, here you can see I do not have any gateways uh, added in my management server. Uh, here you can create uh, security policies and uh, threat prevention policies and uh, here you can uh, log and monitor section where you can see the logs and here you can manage some settings for the user accounts and etc and you can check the session blade etc so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add all these three gateways to my management server. First, I'll go ahead and add a CPHQ and create some rules. And I'll allow internet access for this subnet and create a management policy rule that would allow my management server uh, traffic to go through this firewall or this gateway and add a uh, site one gateway and site two gateway. So I will go and add my, so you can from here add the gateways, you can add from here, or you can add it from the objects here. You can add the gateway from here as well. And you can also add it from here. I don't know why I have checkpoint uh, added all these uh, places but uh, uh, from one screen you can add it from different locations you can create objects from here and from here and you can also go to the object explorer you can create objects here as well so right now these are all the objects network objects ser services objects uh, application vpn etc you can see them all here so i'll go ahead and add my gateway first so I'll proceed with the wizard mode. You can you can also go with the with the classic mode where you will manually have to add uh, the IP address name uh, and uh, the sick key. Or here you can add the name, IP, and then communication you would have to initialize. So I will go ahead and add it from here. Wizard mode and i'll name it cphq and here you can select the gateway platform if you have a physical device uh, you can add that series appliance here in my case i'm using the vm version so i'll select open server and here you can assign the ip address which is 222 next and the one time password is test123 and if you can, if you want it just to add the device and skip the trust communication and initiate that later you can do this you can skip it next so these are the interfaces uh, that i have uh, i should have three interfaces one two three 
uh, I'm not uh, getting this interface. Let me check. So it's HTTPS. I think it may be down because I did not enable the interface, but I did assign the IP address from the CLI. So admin, admin123. network interfaces and eth2 is one is down sorry so edit enable this interface okay that's all and now i should have three interfaces here anyways we will uh, pull those interfaces again from the properties of the gateway if you wanted to edit you can select this I'll check this edit if you wanted to bring any changes to the properties of the gateway you can you can do that so here if you wanted to bring any change you can do which we will check later on okay and this is the anti-spoofing uh, message we will check this later on so i have five uh, changes that i that is to be published and i can only publish it in my console in my management server but it would not be installed on the gateway so i can publish it publish it uh, give it a name it, and publish it or i can go publish and install it from here to the to the gateway i can push those changes i can also do it from here as well i can install the policy so before going ahead and installing the changes to my gateway i will go ahead and create an object for my internal network which is 192.168.11.0 this network and what i'll do is i will also give them internet access and i will also create another policy rule or access control rule that would allow traffic from the from this network to outside so that my management server uh, is able to add these through two gateways so what i will do is i will go to the objects so you can create once again objects from here from here and from the explorer as well so i'll go ahead and create a new network object i'll call this let's say headquarter network which is 11.0 and i'll copy this and add it here this is my network the mask is this and i will also net this behind the behind the gateway interface which is this interface which is 222 whenever anyone wants to go out from this network to the public network should be translated to this address so we have covered this all these in NAT section so if you haven't checked the NAT um, uh, video you can go ahead and check that so I'll install this on the CPHQ. Okay. And I'll need to go to the security policies. So I only have one clean cleanup rule that drops everything. So I'll create a new rule above the cleanup. And I'll call this internet. Perfect maybe so the source is any i will select my object that i created which is 110 and destination is any let me uncheck the vpn column and the action is allow accept let me also uncheck the time we will check this later and i'll log it and i'll also log the cleanup I'll also create a new rule above the internet for the management traffic 
so it's mgmt traffic so it is sourcing let's say from this network to any destination any service and application and the action is accept and i'll log it for the time being or instead uh, let's go and change the destination from any to uh, let's create a new object network object we can also create network object from here if you click on the plus sign and you can create a network object from here as well so this is let's say my uh, network 200 330 291 330 I'm not doing any net or whatsoever here so I'll say okay and I will go ahead and publish and install this on my CPHQ publish and install So I right now only have one uh, gateway and I have selected both the access control policy and as well as the threat prevention I right now do not have any blades active. So anyways it has selected them but we will check this later. So I'll install and let's wait for the installation to complete then we will go ahead and add site 1 and site 2 gateway. So the installation has succeeded. I think I will also need to add the return. So let me also add the return traffic so that I don't get any problem later on. Because by default, uh, Checkpoint Gateways blocks traffic from any source, whether that's uh, the inside or the DMZ or the outside interface. So you would manually have to allow traffic so i'll also install this and let's go ahead and add the other two gateways so i will add cp site 1 and cp site 2 open server 291 which is this guy next the one time password is test123 next and I should have two interfaces uh, I think I have not enabled the other interface it shows uh, let me so it is uh, I think I should not be able to access it from here. I need to access it from here. Uh, which is 100 admin, admin 123. Let me check if the other one, the site 2 has the interface enabled as well. So network interfaces So this is a uh, uh, It's not enabled so I'll enable it And I'll check the other one So it is enabled Okay, let's go back here we will pull those interfaces later finished and i will add site 2 cp site 2 and the address is 291 33 200 
which is this guy and the one time password is test123 next so it does show me both the interfaces and finish so before publishing this uh, on all three gateways what I will do is I will create network object for site 1 and site 2 internal networks and I'll also give them internet access so I'll create two more objects uh so network sorry network new network object and it is uh, let's call it uh, site two site one network and it is one zero one nine two one six eight one zero and I will net it behind the WAN interface, the this interface, which is the ETH zero, and I'll install it on the site one. Okay, I'll create a new network object, and uh, for site two, and I'll add the network as two dot zero. and uh, hide behind two side two install it on uh, gateway two and let's go ahead and publish and install this on all three gateways the changes that we brought uh sorry i need to also create the security policy for the internet traffic so uh, what i will do is i will add i already have this rule what i will do is i will uh, add the internal subnet or internal network of one zero site one and site two in the internet traffic rule that i already have so i will select and add uh, site one and site two for any destination any service and application accept log and installation should be on all the gateways policy targets are all gateways if you have a specific gateway you can select that if you wanted a specific rule to be added only on a specific gateway you can select that only here so i will publish and install this and now you can select here which gateway do you want these changes to be installed on so i will install it on all three because I have changes on for all three so install so let this installation complete So the installation has completed let's go to the gateways and servers so here you can see i have three gateways and the management server uh the status of all are up and th these are the names ip addresses version of the gaia and uh, the blades that are activated right now for the gateways i only have firewall and for the management server i have the policy management um, blade and the logging in status so the cpu utilization you can see here and if there are any updates you can uh, 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 they will be displayed here you can change the view from general to health view to see uh, the uptime uh, memory utilization and the disk space uh, etc you can also go to the health view uh, sorry uh, the traffic view where you can see uh, the traffic utilization you can see the access control which access control policies are uh, applied to which of the gateways uh, we will create other uh, other than standard one uh, in a moment and uh, you can see the threat uh, preventions right now i do not have any threat blades installed on any of the gateway but if you had uh, the the blade should be shown here and the the uh, installation of the 
uh, thread would be here and the dates and you can see the management i right now have only one management server and licenses where none is activated and if you had other gateways you can add uh, from here you have different locations to add from from the smart console from this uh, view right now you can add from here or if you want it you can add from the object section here new uh, more network object servers and gate gateways and servers and gateway you can add it from the object section here uh, you can add the gateway like this you can go to the explorer object explorer you can add it from here as well so you have different locations to create uh, objects in the smart console so the very main ones are from here you can also create uh, uh, if you had network objects or let's say right now gateways so you can add from here or you can also use control e to open the object explorer so here you can see all the objects um, these are the categories the network object service objects that uses tcp udp ports application and categories uh, so all the applications are here and uh, categories also so vpn communities and uh, users and servers etc we will uh, create some of them later on but i just wanted to show you that you can create objects in the smart console from different locations so here if you click on any of the gateway you can edit it, uh, you, it that would take you to the properties of the gateway or you can right click and edit or you if you have any script that has to be run on on any of the gateway you can uh, you can uh, uh, run a script uh, if you want to take backup or restore or let's say you want to use the cli you can use the open shell from here or from here or from here as well that would take you to the command line interface what else we have here is uh, so you can delete it where uh, has this gateway been used so if you have policies or the objects that in different places it has been used it will all be displayed here you can use monitor click on any of the gateways and click on monitor that would take you, uh, give you further information of the device uh, So here you can see uh, the device, the IP address, the Gaia uh, version, the kernel and, and uh, the licenses. Uh, we, we have none right now. So the system details, uh, the utilization of the CPU memory, etc. You can see the traffic. So right now I have not uh, activated the monitoring blade. So let's activate uh, some of the blades uh, on my... Uh, gateways uh, i will uh, activate the vpn uh, blade the application control url I'll, I'll check some of them randomly i'll also add the uh, this gateway the uh, headquarter gateway to the uh, to the domain i'll add it to the domain uh, so the username is admin the password is test123 uh, so let's see if uh, it can connect okay successfully connected next finished and uh, i'll check the content awareness and monitoring this one to see further details on the monitor of uh, and we can also um, later on check the logs and monitors here which is this uh, blade required for that purpose so i'll say okay i'll also do the same for my cp site one and two and uh, i'll not add this to the domain right now because i need a vpn uh, vpn uh, community that has to be uh, configured first uh, for this private subnet to be able to reach through the public or through this um, other subnet and create a vpn session or tunnel then be able to reach my uh, domain controller or active directory so i will leave that right now so i'll only check the monitoring and content awareness this is anti-spoofing uh, uh, we will uh, talk on this later
and okay yes this is the portal details uh, redirection portal okay and i'll also do for uh, for my cp side 2 i think uh, yes i guess i missed the vpn blade so okay yes yes and let's go ahead and install this on all three gateways the objective of this session is to only give you an idea of the smart console what do we have in different places and how do we interact with it it's not to test every um, every configuration that we do here uh, for that we have other videos and sessions so i'll install this on all three gateways so the installation has succeeded don't worry of the uh, status uh, they eventually would come up so now if i go to the properties of any of these gateways uh, let's say uh, monitor now you can see other details for the blades and uh, the license and for the system you can see further details here uh, for for vpn if you had any you can see the traffic here uh, and and you can also check uh, the top services right now uh, i don't think i will be having too much of a volume or traffic going on so but here you can see uh, uh, detailed info here and if you wanted to go to the web ui of any of the interfaces you can go to the actions and open web ui that will take you to the uh, web interface So let's go to the properties of any of these gateways. Uh, let's right click and edit. So here you can see the detail of this uh, gateway, the name, IP address, IPv6 address. If you have, if it has a dynamic address uh, and the, the trust is right now established. If you wanted to reset it, you can go to the communications. Right now it is initialized. If you wanted to reset it, sometimes it goes down. So you can uh, reset and then uh, or you can test it as well or and and uh, if you reset it you would have to uh, reset on the gateway from the cli as well using the cp config uh, command you have to use the cp config command here admin admin one two three and uh, you need to go and select the fifth option that will reset you would have to say um, agree uh, to reset it and you uh, it will ask you for a reboot as well so you will need to reboot the device and then use that one time password here and here is the platform details right now i'm using the uh, vm version if you have any physical appliance from any one of these uh, series you can select that and the gaia version uh, OS sorry and the version and here you see the uh, network security blades and this is the management right now I have uh, I, I don't use this gateway for the purpose of management so I haven't checked any of those here the next one is network management so right now you see that I have not pulled the interfaces here if you want to pull your interfaces with her and then accept you have two options whether you want to to pull it with the topology or without topology without topology would not put the interfaces in different zone zones so right now by default when i say with topology it took this one being a public in public range so it put it in the external and this one being in internal if you wanted to edit any one of this you can go and edit it modify so you can edit from the internal and and if you wanted to put it in a zone you can create a new zone here and and this is the entire spoofing error that previously we were receiving you have to check this it has to be checked and anti-spoofing you know that if someone is basically so anti-spoofing is like when someone uh, tries to spoof your uh, internal uh, network and from outside tries to get into this interface and pretends that I'm from this network uh, so uh, this guy would prevent that type of an attack so that's uh, uh, 
uh, anti-spoofing feature. So uh, you can uh, you can put this in different topologies here. So right now here you see uh, some main uh, subjects or topics uh, that is VPN, NAT and HTTPS inspection. So for, for the detailed uh, understanding of VPN, NAT and uh, HTTPS inspection, go on check the other videos. Uh, we, we have uh, thoroughly explained it there and have configured all these three there but here i'm just giving you a quick overview and uh, go through of the smart console and here you can uh, use system backup uh, to use any one of these protocols and username and password then you can take the backup these are which uh, subnet should be behind my vpn once you create vpn community and here you can configure your proxy if you have any and this is the net uh, by default all the uh, internal networks are um, netted behind the gateway IP address and this is the HTTPS inspection we uh, explained this in the ins HTTP inspection uh, blade video you can check that uh, where we can create a certificate and then enable HTTPS inspection here you have HTTP HTTPS uh, proxy uh, this is the um, web portal and this is the user check web portal uh, for all the uh, threat preventions and uh, access controls would redirect you to the user check this uh, url and you can use a certificate for this as well if you have any uh, certificate or ca server you can import from the ca server as well a certificate to be used for the user uh, uh, the user check redirection and on which interfaces should this uh, user check be available or uh, you can edit here through all interfaces or maybe through a specific interface or based on the um, firewall policy uh, you can check all interfaces in the ipsec uh, vpn you can add your vpn communities if you have created you can check the vpn video we have uh, explained it there as well uh, so here you can add the vpn community and you can add your links uh, on which interfaces do you want uh, the VPN should work or if they are netted we have explained all these or based on topology we have thoroughly exp explained it there and advanced VPN uh, if you bring a change on the VPN community that would affect all the gateways and if you bring change here it would only bring the change on this gateway so we have wire we have explained like wire mode so if you modify wire mode there or tunnel sharing there it will affect all the gateways but here it only affects this gateway and here is the vpn client if you want you to enable or disable secure remote or vpn uh, for the uh, ios or android or uh, mac or windows you can check and uncheck them here and this is monitoring and logging and fitch policy right now I have only one management um, policy management server if i had more you can add them here so right now this gateway is fetching the uh, policies uh, from this management server so that is the uh, properties of the gateway and you can publish your uh, the changes that you have brought on the management server but it will not push it uh, to the gateways uh, on whichever gateway that you have brought the change and you can uh, name your session uh, the smart console session right now uh, that we have so let's say let's call it security sec admin and uh, if you want it if you don't want these changes to be published or installed you can discard them here so you can discard it like this once published you can install the uh, the changes to the gateways from here you can also install uh, the changes from here as well you can uh, install from here or from here so the next is security policies and we have one uh, policy package that's named standard which has two policies access control and threat prevention that has policies section under access control and NAT 
and we have policy and exceptions under the threat prevention and this is the shared policy which is if you have a multiple packages then this shared policy would be applied on multiple packages and these are the rules and they are installed on all the gateways and here we have the uh, logs of each rule uh, when uh, traffic is being matched so you have the time the firewall the action the connection and the interface the origin and the source and destination and the service or port and the access uh, rule name and the policy package name and the description of the of the log uh, here you have the history whoever has uh, edited any one of these uh, rules so uh, it will be shown in the history section if there has been a recent change in the details of this policy you can see the details and summary you can see who created and on which date etc and here you have access tools uh, of the vpn config if you wanted to create new vpn community or use the existing two ones that are uh, my internet used for the full meshed uh, type of topology or uh, if you have secure vpn or vpn clients then you use this one if you wanted to create a new star and mesh uh, so you can go for so if you wanted further details on vpn you can check the vpn video uh, session and uh, if you wanted to know more on the net we have another uh, mm, video on the uh, net as well here uh, you can update it this is the uh, user check for different types of redirections these are the default ones that are uh, there you can edit these existing ones or you can create a new one as well from here uh, for the ask or the block or inform um, when basically you wanted to um, use one any one of these in the access rule policy for the redirection you can use these here you have the uh, client certificates and the application wiki which takes you to the uh, checkpoint uh, website uh, for the application types and the installation history uh, whenever uh, uh, you have brought any any change and have installed it on 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 these gateways so this is one policy package that you can uh, install on uh, on all the gateways or if you have a very big or enterprise type of an environment and you have a lot of uh, mm, gateways in the headquarter and you have many many sites and you have uh, gateways or firewalls in each site and it's hard to manage it from the from the one from one standard policy package then what you can do is you can create other policy packages for every site maybe or you can create a separate one for your headquarter or central site and then uh, uh, use that uh, policy package for only those gateways so let's say I'm, i i right now have uh, three sites so what i will do is i will create three policy packages uh, one for the headquarter one for site one and for site two so i can go to the manage policies here so this is the uh, the only package that i right now have if i want to create a new one i can click on the manage and and i can create a new from here or edit the existing one or i can remove it or i can clone it or view it so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and clone this because i already have this so, so if you wanted to create a new one you can create here uh, maybe you want to say for site 2 let's say I, i'm creating this for site 2 and uh, you only want the policy access control policy to be on this uh, included in this package or you want the threat prevention as well so i will check both and on which gateways do you want this package to be uh, to be installed on so all the gateways or a specific gateway in this case what i will do is i will go ahead and select site 2 and for site 1 i will clone uh, so okay you can create like this so i have another uh, uh, policy package here you can see site 2 uh, i will create a new one i will clone the existing standard one uh, clone it and name it let's say site 1 for site 1 okay
or uh, what I can do is right now see uh, the difference here is like if, if I close this and uh, let me open uh, site one as well so here you can see I already have these rules uh, which I can use but in site 2 I do not have what I'll do is I will go ahead and clone for site 2 as well so what I will do is I will remove this site 2 so I'll remove this and because I don't want to create uh, uh, rules for site 2 so I will edit uh, right click and clone standard for site 2 as well and uh, I will edit the existing standard and I will name it uh, let's say uh, uh, maybe headquarter or central site let's call it HQ okay and the gateways you can see that all these package three packages are going to be installed on all the gateways i don't want this so i will go ahead and edit again and instead of all i will say specific gateway which is for uh, this package i will only install this on the headquarter gateway and for this i will install it on the site one site one and for site 2 package I will right click edit and install it on the site 2 ok so you can see right now I have three policy packages and they are installed on their respective uh, gateways I, I right now have one gateway in, e uh, in each site but you may have hundreds or tons of uh, gateways in each site then you can use uh, uh, these packages based on the company policy and the next here is the layers uh, in the layers what you can do is you can create a separate layer for each policy or you can create a shared policy layer let's let's call it shared and what i'll do is i'll uh, activate the firewall blade the application and url and the content awareness and you can create this shared and use it on one of the packages or you can say use this this same uh, shared um, uh, layer on all and okay and close so i also right now need to bring some changes to my rules here because if you come to each any one of the uh, the uh, policy packages i have the management which is for all and internet traffic rule that is uh, where i have the source is for all three sites but what i want to do is i want to remove some of these because this package does not belong to site one now so i'm going to remove this and remove for two as well and the uh, for the for this i will leave it as it is for the uh, cphq uh, because i need to be able to allow the management traffic uh, for site one and site two to go through the uh, this firewall or gateway and instead of all the gateways that this rule or policy package should be installed i will go ahead and select only the hq and i also need to bring the change on on the site one policy package as well so i i do not have this network as internal so i'm going to remove this and i will install this on my site one and this one also site one and for this i do not have the internet network as of uh, in here in this gateway i only have one zero as the internal so i do not have 11 and 2 here so what i will do is i will remove them so i'll remove this and i will remove this and i also need to bring change here as well 
so I don't have this as the internal network anymore and I do not have this and I also don't have this for the site 2 and should be installed on the site 2 gateway site 2 gateway and let's go ahead and uh, if, you, if you click on that I right now have given internet access only for the for the 11 subnet which is the headquarter network which is this network I do not I have not yet given internet access for this so what I'll do is I will give uh, use the, the the in checkpoint they call it hide net in in other some 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 call it uh, masquerade uh, some of the vendors call it masquerade and some call it as uh, pat port address translation cisco calls it pat and microtech or others call it masquerade but checkpoint calls it hide net so what i'll do is right now i have only given access for the headquarter network i have not given for the for for my uh, uh, site one and site two so i will double click you can edit the object from here or from all these other locations so i can double click here and go to NAT and I will select that uh, perform height NAT not static so height and I will install this on the site 1 ok so I will do the same for site 2 uh, 20 network so I will say install this on the site 2 and ok so let's go ahead and, and install these packages now on all three gateways so you can publish only to the management server or you can directly go install and uh, publish from here publish and install so you have to publish and install one by one now because you have three pack policy packages and you want each one to be installed on each gateway so you, you have the option to select now So before we had only one standard policy package, but now we have three. So I, I, I can select now any one of these when you have brought some changes to anyone. So I'll select HQ. And now you can see that only this gateway is being shown. So I'll select uh, install. So this policy is going to now get installed on the HQ gateway. This package. And this package would be installed on site 2, site 1 sorry, and this one on site 2. So let this finish, then I will go ahead and install the site 1 and site 2, one by one. But eventually that one package uh, versus all these three would do the same thing. But the only reason is that if you have hundreds and thousands of rules here, it would be hard enough to manage them all in one policy package so that being the reason you create multiple policy packages for different sites or for different regions and then apply them on their respective gateways so i will install again this time and this time i will install the site one uh, now uh, right now in site one i only have one gateway that's why it shows me only one gateway with this address if you have if you if i've had other gateways it would show me that which gateway do i want this package to be installed on i would select that but now i have only one so i'll install so it says that i already have the uh, standard policy package that previously was there so do you want to override it so i'll go ahead and say yes because the policy management server is directly connected here so it, site 1 gateway and site 2 gateway had no information of the changes so let this finish then I will uh, install the site 2 and let's install again for site 2 this time 
the site to gateway 200 ip address so I'll, it is asking me that uh, you already have a policy there do you want to override it so i'll say go ahead and install yes so here you have three um, packages now and one shared policy which was used for all uh, sorry one shared layer if you click here on the layers so we already have this one layer that will be used on all so the default action is drop that will uh, uh, implicitly deny everything so if 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 you select this then what you would need to do is you will have to allow traffic allow this allow that allow this and then eventually at the end there is an uh, implicit deny all that drops everything so you could either do that or instead you can select say yes accept everything then you will need to uh, create deny rules deny this deny that deny this then you will be having an ex uh, implicit action as accept you can uh, do that uh, here you, you can define the permissions who has read or write access to this layer if you have other profiles which we will create other users and profiles in the manage in se settings so you can add them here I right now do not have anyone any profile other than these two that are the default so i think i made the implicit uh, as accept so i'll change this i'll say okay and the policy installation has succeeded on all three gateways and now if we come to the net section here i should have net uh height net for all three gateway uh, internal networks of all three gateways and the type is uh, height net if you wanted to create no ones you can create here no manually let's say new rule below you need to define the source address the uh, the destination the source service and the translated uh, uh, address and then on which gateways so uh i'll discard this change so this is the net but uh, we have a separate net video you can check that for the complete net uh, static and uh, dynamic and pat you can check the net video so this is the access control policy you also have the threat prevention policy here which has only one rule but it's not even configured it's it's not yet enabled if you want to enable it you just need to give it a name and also you would need to enable the blades for which blades these are the blades the ips the antibot antivirus so for this rule and threat prevention to work you will need to enable it name it here and enable the or activate the blades on the gateway on the properties of the gateway and on which uh, targets you want this threat prevention policy to be installed on so you can go ahead and check uh, the uh, we have other videos uh, for the threat prevention for e uh, for every one of these we have for ips for antibot for antivirus uh, we have other uh, uh, training sessions video clips that you can check that as well for url filtering and here you can define the scope for which network or host uh, or address you want this threat prevention policy to be um let's go ahead just let's let's name it because for some of these uh, uh i already have enabled uh, some of these blades there on my gateway so i'll just name this thread prevention policy for the protected uh, scope uh, you can select leave it as any or because it's anyways under the headquarter and in my case i only have one gateway there and i have only one internal subnet so you can select it like this and for each site you you can because for for the for for site one you have a, another threat prevention rule under the threat prevention policy which you can enable uh, so what i will do is i will only bring this change and i can install it so now 
after having the blades having these blades enabled and this rule would now be functional because if you don't activate the blades and you don't enable this it will not work but now it will only for these uh, for these uh, blades that are activated so the uh, installation has uh, succeeded for uh, for the threat prevention policy and here you have the https inspection we have another video once again for https inspection as well you can check that uh, so you can uh, this is the general and these are the two profiles that i have the default ones you can create a new one and the uh, the gateways so you can uh, you can go ahead and select whether you want to use uh, recommended or default so normally uh, it's recommended to use recommended inspection uh, profile you can uh, then what you would need to do is it, it it will not be enabled you will need to go in on each gateway and to the properties of it and you need to create a certificate for it in the https inspection so you need to create a certificate that enable HTTPS inspection. Then later on it would work. So you can go ahead and check the HTTPS inspection uh, session. Uh, so let's actually go to uh, all these uh, three sites because I have uh, NAT configured for all. And I have my rules allowed for all three gateways and all three pack in all three packages. Uh, so so let's go ahead and check if I can if these rules are actually working so let's test uh, the internet access from the headquarter network let's go ahead to Windows 7 client PC so from here uh, if I ping google.com so I'm able to ping it if I browse so I'm able to browse as well so let's go to site one and I check my uh, IP address. So it's 1.2. If I try browsing, I should be able to browse as well. So I'm able to browse from site one and let's check from site two that my rules are actually working so i'll directly go and browse so you can see i'm having internet access and my rule and packages are actually working so let's go ahead and tweak these rules uh, so right now i have only three rule one for management the other one for internet and the final is the cleanup rule that drops everything so if if you have hundreds of rules here it would be hard for the network admin or security admin to be able to manage them all uh, and, and, and in case of any issue that rises so troubleshooting would also be uh, uh, a challenging uh, uh, issue there so what you can do is you can create different sections or inline layers so uh, let's go ahead and create I, I don't have a lot of rules here what I'll do is I'll create a section for my management and another section for my uh, internet traffic so I'll right click and create a new section above so I'll just name this let's say uh, management I'll call it management and so this is the management and the next I will uh, create one section uh, above for the data let's call this data uh so so here you can uh, collapse them and and uh, expand them so so in my case i don't have a lot of rules but if you have hundreds of rules it would be very good if you create sections for each one so i uh, for this i uh, for management i have only one right now so what i'll do is i'll go ahead and create a new rule above for the inline layer so i'll call this uh, management traffic uh, 
let's say management traffic and sources let's say uh, any of these two sources uh, which is uh, this one and uh, this one the destination is uh, this uh, which is uh, this network for the service and application I'll leave it as any for the action what I can do is I can go ahead and create inline layer if you remember we created one shared layer we can use that shared layer here which we created uh on the on the uh, policy packages you can use that so i use that shared a uh, layer that we created and you have a default cleanup for every inline layer so i have one management rule that permits this so what i will do is i will drag this and drop it above the cleanup so now if we define this inline layer the traffic if traffic is sourced from these two distance to this network for any service and application it would use an inline layer which says that go now and check these rules that are below this so this is also good for performance and decision making to the firewalls and gateways so if you have hundreds and thousands of rules it will not have to go through all if you create inline layers so if traffic is matched here it will check the inline layer if it matches it takes the action whether that is accept or redirection redirected to some other location or if it's uh, not then it would drop it it will not check the other uh, inline layers or the other rules so i will go and log this cleanup as well and I, I will go ahead and create an inline for the internet a uh, new rule above and i will call this the internet or you can name it anything so if if something is sourced from the headquarter network here and distant to any location and for the inline layer you can use that shared or let's go ahead this time create a new one uh, i will go ahead and select the application and url filtering and the content awareness as well so let's say this is internet inline layer uh, i'll say okay so it will create me a, a cleanup rule below it so what i need to do is i need to drag and drop it above the cleanup and i'll lock this cleanup so now for internet traffic if it is sourced from this to this destination for this application that it will check the other layers the 2.1 and 2.2 2.3 2.4 if there's a match good if there's no match then default the final cleanup would be applied so i will also create a new rule for for the final cleanup as well so let's let's create a new section first i'll call this uh, final cleanup and uh, i will create a new rule above let's call this also final cleanup uh, rule if it is sourced from any one of these check the inline layer which is let's call create a new inline and let's call this uh, final whatever name you want to give and uh, so i don't need this final one the the last cleanup rule i don't need this so what i'll do is i'll delete this and you can see that these rules are uh, on all the uh, gateways anyways we have one gateway in the in this policy package if you still wanted to 
select the specific gateway that is in the HQ package you can select it here so what I will do is I will select this only the HQ gateway so the only difference here is that it gives you two benefits one is the for the ease of management uh, administration and maintenance and troubleshooting purpose the other one is it gives you it gives the firewall good performance now you have a neat and clean uh, uh, policy package so you can expand and collapse them all like this and let's go ahead and install this on the headquarter gateway but there is no uh, difference from the change uh, from the policy uh, rules that we had before and now there's nothing new but the only difference it gives you is uh, manageability as well as uh, performance to the uh, gateway so it is uh, installed let's also create a new section for the block traffic let's create a, a new uh, section above the data i'll create a new rule and i will uh, name this let's say uh, blocked apps or maybe urls url categories and sources let's say uh, my internal network 11 0 destination any and i will create a new section for this uh, i will name it uh, blocked traffic and uh, i will create an inline layer for this uh, filter whatever name you want to give i will select the applications and url and content awareness okay it will create a uh, uh, default cleanup i'll go ahead and create a new rule above uh, let's call it a uh, blocked services let's say uh, the source is 110 which is the this destination is any uh, services and applications i'll go ahead and let's let's block some uh, categories here maybe randomly i will check uh, select uh, facebook let's say you can select uh, specific ones or you can check the url filtering uh, video for this we have de uh, explained this in detail there so i'm randomly selecting uh, let's uh, pick twitter maybe uh, let's uh, filter youtube and uh, let's uh, filter some uh, url categories let's go ahead with uh, pornography uh, also uh, this and uh, let's go and child abuse uh, maybe let's go ahead and search engine uh, let's go and select the jobs and i don't want my internal employees to be able to check uh, search for other jobs uh, like the 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 you the websites that are like under the sub job uh, such category would be filtered let's say i want to block them uh, let's say indeed.com monster.com glassdoor others they would all uh, be filtered now and the action would be dropped for the content you can select if 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 you want from this subnet no one be able to download specific extension files then you can select it here like they should not be able to download the executable files so you can select here or maybe i don't want them to be able to download tar files so you can select tar here 
and then I'll lock this I'll lock the cleanup as well and I will install this maybe let's say I don't need to select this anyways but I'm just doing it uh, to give you an idea but you don't need to uh, install it on the CPHQ you don't need to select it here because uh, anyways this policy package has only one gateway so let, let's go ahead and publish this as well installation failed on uh, cphq uh, let's check why has it failed uh, so uh, rule 2 and rule 3 services application policy verification failed uh, yeah so i guess uh, i have two conflicting rules i have this subnet and this subnet for any destination any service and application I'm dropping it here and then I'm allowing it here so there is a conflict what I can do is I can drag this and put it uh, under the after the blocked services and then I guess I would also need to um, delete this as well because it won't work uh, so I'll get rid of this I guess I'll leave the uh, data rule well, let's also get rid of this now it should work uh, because I have uh, I am uh, if if it is sourced from this to this to this then goes here if it matches this drops and if not then it's allowed and if nothing is matched then it is uh, dropped so let's now go and install this and see if there is a difference uh cphq install uh, let's wait for this i hope i don't get an error this time okay now uh, it is uh successful so you won't be able to check uh, these uh, applications and uh, categories of the URLs that we have filtered. Next, let's go ahead and explore the object section. So these are all the uh, objects, the network objects, uh, and you click on each one it gives it, it takes you to the subcategory uh, you have the host uh, you have the network objects and gateways uh, address ranges you have if you wanted to create new ones you can go ahead and create a network object here name it IP or the subnet and the mask and uh, if you wanted to create a host you can name it let's say if you have a internal server something uh, you can give the IP address of it and then the network management and if you want it to perform static net for that then you can select here that one IP address would be statically netted to this and if it's a specific service server whether that is a web server mail server or DNS server then you can do the configuration of ports etc by selecting let's say if it's a web server you can go to the configuration what type of operating system it is using what type of application engine and which ports and on which gateway uh, should the pro protection be performed and then you can create a rule for that so this object section is only to create objects uh, then the actual thing would be to create rules or policy rules or threat prevention uh, policy uh, for that for that object now you can also create network groups if you have multiple networks inside and you want to group them let's say i want to uh, let's say for uh, 
this network, this network, this network. Let's say group one. And then uh, instead of uh, specifying each one, you can come here and select that uh, group one and take uh, whatever action uh, you wanted to perform on that group. So uh, next we have, uh, if you click on more, you can create a, uh, add gateways, network objects and host and group them. And uh, you can also create address ranges here. Uh, if you want a net to be performed or an action or a specific range you want to filter, you can select the start IP and end IP here. And then you uh, add the object in any one of these rules and take a proper action on that and uh, next what we have is uh, uh, security zones you can create uh, for the interfaces uh, let's say for this subnet I want to put this subnet in a specific uh, security zone you create the zone and then you come here uh, on the properties of the gateway and then you go to the network management and any one of these interfaces you want to put them on that security zone modify and then here you select that zone specify the zone and here you select the zone once you create it from the uh, object and then eventually you would instead of uh, uh, specifying the subnet here you would specify the zone from the inside zone to outside zone and then take action on it and uh, so this is uh, this is the uh, network uh, object and this is the service like let's say if you wanted to uh, create a specific TCP or UDP based service if you have a specific application uh, server inside your infrastructure then you can create uh, if, if it's not using a common well-known protocol or port then you can name it and define a port for it and whether that's a udp ftp or what type of a protocol it's using and then define a port and then you define that object in any one of the policy sections and then take an action on it uh, next you have the custom application insights if you have a specific application uh, that's not well known and it's not under the category of these well-knowns like let's say for the child abu abuse or maybe job search there's another website maybe let's say uh, uh, which on which category you want to add it you select that category here and then you name it and then here you specify the the url or uri for that let's say uh, motasim.com i want to put this So uh, the next we have is uh, uh, user categories or you can group uh, the different sites if you have like five, six, seven, eight sites or applications you have and you want to group them, you can group them here. Uh, you can group all those once you create them there, they will be shown and you can select them and put them in a group and then uh, create a rule for that and take uh, an action and you have uh, vpn communities we have star and uh, mesh to be created we can create it from the vpn communities you can check the vpn video for this and the data type if you have a specific file attribute keyword or maybe pattern let's say file attribute attribute uh, if a file contains let's say abc and it belongs to let's say a uh, text file uh, then uh, maybe what actions and you can specify the size here and then you define that uh, uh, you select that and take a proper action on that object uh, next we have is uh, data groups you, you can create uh, add multiple data types into one group and you have uh, more where you can add compound data type groups where you specify multiple uh, attributes and regexes and then take 
create an object the next one is users uh, here you can create user objects keep in mind that these users are not uh, the ones that are used for the purpose of management of the console or the gateways or the uh, management server instead these are the general users uh, the operational users that uh, are inside your uh, company and here you can uh, create the LDAP group uh, you can create access roles like let's say uh, you want to create a, a new uh, let's say Kamran from which network let's say uh, you'd uh, say any network or a specific network uh, uh, let's say my internal network and uh, uh, and the users uh, from which any any user this is just a name this is not the actual user here you define any user or a specific user let's say let's take that user from my uh, from my domain from my active directory you can add it here you if you have created the user here we which we can create i will show you but if it's a domain user you click here i have my motosim.com where i have integrated my uh, uh, cphq to my and active directory uh, domain controller and i can pull all the objects that uh, that are inside the active directory and uh, so so if you come here to the users i should have a uh, camera and user which i created previously there so i can select this user so this is the actual user and from which machine let's say he is using a uh, maybe let's say this machine which is 13 um, so uh, you would uh, add that machine here uh, we have to create a, um, a host object for that as well so I have not created so I will say uh, any any machine and you can say okay and now let's create a rule above the blocked a new for for Kamran user let's say Kamran name and the source is instead of instead of a network I'll select Kamran and I'll allow everything for Kamran user but for the rest uh, for the rest of the users that uh, resides in the 11.0 would be dropped for these applications and then allowed for everything else so the next we have is the uh, users group you can create a user here and then you can say a uh, user group you can create a user group and then take an action and here you can uh, create uh, servers for for let's say data center servers aws azure etc and here you can create uh, resources for the URI, FTP, TCP, uh, SIFs, etc. And here you can create time. Uh, let's say I want to create, uh, I may have different shifts uh, of employees, maybe three shifts uh, of 24 hour, uh, each one with eight hours. So I can create, uh, let's say, shift one starts, uh, let's say, from uh, immediately and the hour range is let's say uh, from 00, 00 all the way let's say to eight o'clock morning so eight and daily or let's say specific days of the week uh, that's shift one so so you you now should be saying one more object here which is shift one uh, you can create another shift uh, let's uh, create shift two uh, and this time let's say from 8.08 let's say to 4 o'clock maybe 04 or 16 and uh, okay and you can create another one but here you will have to right click here and select time to be able to see the time here then let's say for Kamran user which is working in maybe shift one so I am allowing him only in this shift to be able to access the public network or internet 
uh, and you can also create uh, uh, time groups and you can create user checks here to ask or inform or drop let's say uh, I'm, I'm right now allowing everything for for uh, for Kamran user but instead I, I will say I will ask him to accept the company policy which I can edit in the user section you can select ask or maybe if you wanted to inform him give him some type of a notification or some access approval which would be redirected uh, to a specific page you can check this in the uh, in the services and application and content filtering a video i think we have further explained the user checks uh, there and we have created you can modify and create and add your own image as well of your company uh, and and uh, uh, you can edit the text there as well so if you wanted to create a new ask or uh, inform or uh, drop object you can create here or you can also create it from here so i previously showed you these are the existing ones you if you wanted to edit let's say this you click on it you can edit the text you can uh, this is the image if you want if you wanted uh, to use your own image you can add your own image here maybe whatever image you select here then it will be shown there to the user when they access uh, uh, when they access the uh, the public network or any of the sites based on the rule that you have defined and created and here you can create a limit let's say maybe i want kamran user uh, to be able uh, in his own shift to be able to download this let's say let's say 500 meg or maybe 500 gig of uh, he should only be able to use uh, uh, this download rate and upload should be let's say 100 mb whatever and let's say call this uh, k or maybe kamran limit rate let's say come on limit rate okay and then here uh, you can click on more and you can define select that camera limit rate and here for the ask you can change let's say you have uh, different for the ask you have different uh, policy uh, user check you have created you can uh, select that right now i have it, it 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 shows me the company policy which is the default one how often should he be asked once a day once a week once a month or maybe for every every one hour i want him to be uh, a, to to accept to be asked for for uh, for the company policy acceptance he will be presented with a checkbox uh, he would be redirected to to the address which i will show you from the properties of the gateway which we initially while uh, adding the gateways to the management server i did show you there so every hour he should confirm and check that box and you can also enable the identity captive portal which uh, is here so he will be redirected uh, to this address uh, the user check so to this uh, uh, web portal he would be redirected to and he will have to uh, accept that checkbox and the company policy and then he will be uh, allowed to access uh, for for his shift and uh, based on his, the download and upload that we have defined i'm not sure what changes have i brought so what i would do is i will discard all these changes don't want them to be applied because i don't know what have i uh, checked and unchecked so so this is how you create policies access control policy rules and threat prevention and this is how also you create objects here 
and these are the object categories and the default objects that you have and the access tools that I explained and uh, summary details log history and expand and collapse and install an action you can also export or maybe let's say go to a specific rule if you have hundreds of them you can go let's say go, go to let's say rule 2 it will take you to rule 2 uh, if you want to export it to a file maybe later on for the purpose of uh, reporting you can also do that and the history when when on which dates has changes being made on 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 this uh, access control policy you can check that if you have a uh, multiple security admins now in the firewall logs you can uh, uh, check the firewall logs audit logs access control logs and these are all the logs uh, the firewall ones you have the audit one audit logs the access control logs and uh, which requires smart event uh, we will enable that in a second so so here you can see the time of the log the blade that has been used the firewall blade the action except whether that is dropped the connection or if it's an audit or lock the interface or the origin the source destination or the access rule name and the description of the lock if you click on any one of them double click uh, it gives you further detail the log info it was the origin was this gateway time blade uh, product family and the connection uh, source was this source port uh, 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 the source uh, uh, zone the destination address uh, interface the policy uh, action was accept and the uh, rule name of the policy was management mgmt traffic and id etc the details so you, you you can get these details here and if you wanted to filter if you have hundreds and thousands of logs if you wanted to filter you can click here and you can filter based on source address or if you wanted to uh, filter it based on destination or maybe let's say blade uh, let's say you can select the blade and if you if it was service or port or uh, origin let's say origin was let's say any anything from site one and then it shows you only the site one locks firewall locks indeed so these are the uh, the site one uh, firewall locks uh, the general uh, logs requires uh, the smart event and the x control also the audit log shows me that uh, whoever has cha brought changes uh, these are the changes that uh, has been brought on the on the uh, gateways and the management server so on this time this user deleted an ob uh, a rule and it was under this this and uh, you can check all these details here and let's go ahead and activate the smart event so i can see the general and access control for the specific traffic so i'll right click on the uh, checkpoint policy management server the management server which is this uh, uh, bo box so i'll right click edit and what i'll need to do is i'll need to go to uh, the general properties and i will need to select these two and okay so i will publish this and now if you come to the logs and monitor the smart view will be activated so if you go to any one of them you would uh, get further details and be able to uh, monitor uh, your gateways logs uh, in smart view view if you open new tab uh, you will be able to open access control audit view general view and you would also be able to go to the uh, settings if you wanted to bring any kind of a change in the sm smart event let's say you wanted to view more information on something that you need you will be able to check and uncheck it from the uh, smart event uh, uh, settings 
so let's say if you want it to go to the information you want it to see the alert from the gateways uh, the severity of uh, let's say information medium high critical or let's say if, uh, if your links uh, of the uh, of the gateways goes up and down uh, you will be able to check and uncheck that and then you will need to save it uh, and save this so this will install the new changes So the new changes has uh, successfully been installed and if you wanted to check any anything else like uh, in virus alerts you want to see threat uh, repaired virus and worms logs for those in the smart event uh, you would be able to check and uncheck them from here and here in the tunnel and users monitoring you would be able to check uh, in real time uh, the activity that's going on from the smart view so uh, these are my gateways three gateways and uh, one management server and if you wanted to check the gateway statuses uh, the VPN firewalls you can check here and the traffic let's say you wanted to uh, see in real time the the top destinations let's say for, from which gateway and you select the inbound outbound interface let's say I will go with uh, the CPHQ so here you would be able to see in real time what's happening uh, so i will give it a little time uh, uh, so you would be able to see uh, more activity going on here uh, let's go and uh, maybe let's say brow let's browse uh, some website say checkpoint.com uh, so you can uh, right now uh, see uh, some activity going on here you can change the views uh, here or if you wanted to check the top sources uh, in the traffic section uh, let's go with uh, headquarter gateway once again and you would be able to see uh, the top sources of your internal network who is using how much amount of uh, bandwidth and uh, you can in real time monitor from the smart uh, view you can also check the tunnels here uh, right now i do not have any tunnel uh, and here you would be able to check the users uh, which users are uh, using what types of uh, services and uh, uh, in real time you would be able to monitor the bandwidth etc you can also use a smart view to be open in a web browser and uh, for this management server you click here on the smart view it will ask you for the credentials of the policy management server uh, admin admin 123 uh, so here you would be able to check the general overview access controls in real time uh, from the smart view using smart view and as, as i do not have any uh, activity too much going on no infected host prevent no nothing in the prevented attacks zero in the high uh, risk attacks etc so they are all showing me zero for the gateways and servers it would take a little time to add them and uh, so that is logs and monitor next we have is uh, management and settings now here you can manage the users uh, that would uh, access the smart console and uh, manage the policy management server so here is the permissions and administrators right now I have only one uh, administrator named admin and the time uh, of the expiration and the profile that it is attached and it's using the the os authentication method uh, to be able to log in the gaia os uh, it's it's a gaia os and it's using that password to log into the smart console if you wanted to create new admins you can come to the administrators and create new administrators 
let's say I will create a, a new admin uh, called uh, Kamran and what type of authentication method are you using the checkpoint at the password you using which we, we need to set right now here or if you wanted to use the operating system user if you wanted to create a uh, password of the Gaia OS if you wanted to use uh, a one-time password which would uh, use secure ID and if you have a radius server inside your environment uh, you can use uh, a remote access dial-in user service if you have Cisco IS uh, you can integrate that and then use uh, radius or if you have Microsoft radius uh, installed you can use radius or if uh, uh, you can if, if you have TACX server terminal access control access control system then you can use TACX once again uh, you can use Cisco ICE or ACS server there uh, uh, the difference between these two is that this is open standard protocol and this is a um, Cisco proprietary so in my case let's go ahead um, we create a, a new user here so I will set a password for it test one two three test one two three and if you wanted the user to change the password at next organ you can select check and uncheck this okay so the next is the per permissions and the profile so i right now have default three profiles we will go ahead and create a new profile here in the permissions profile and i will not attach this let's go ahead create uh, a profile there and then we will attach that uh, when should the uh, expiration of this account be so this account should never expire uh, you can uh, add additional details of the user here okay uh, sorry the permission profile I need to at least select something uh, I will change this because I don't want the because we already do have one admin uh, user that's using a super user profile so here you can create uh, profiles where you can granularly control that the user should be having access to what shall they be able to create objects shall they be able to bring changes to the access control or the threat prevention or the policies or the gateways or shall they be able to only and only uh, access the logs and monitor and be able to monitor uh, the traffic or your uh, uh, gateways or network environment so let's go ahead and create a new profile so I have three profiles here that uh, one has read all the other one has write all and the other one is the super user which has uh, everything which has uh, full control and the very main difference of the super user compared to these two is that super users would be able to create and administer other users however these two would only be able to read would be only able to read write would be able to uh, bring changes to the policies the gateways the logs but uh, the super user would also be able to create other users and manage them as well so i'll create a new uh, profile here so i'll call this uh, hq profile let's say uh, do you want a read and write to be given to this uh, profile or you want it to only give the read only for the audit purpose or if you want to customize it i'll go ahead and select customize and gateways do you want this uh, profile to be able to manage licenses and packages install or remove licenses or change or uh, uh, create new packages shall they only read have have read access or write access or do you want a provision for the virtual system shall they be able to take backups and restore backups and shall they be able to open the shell from here or from other locations um, and if they you want them to be able to run one-time scripts the next we have is the access control so here you can granularly also control the the policies uh, for the access control do you want them to be shown the policy the access control policy or not if you still want it yes then you will do you want them to be able to edit the firewall uh, blade let's say or you want the ac application and control and url filtering do you want them to be able to bring changes to the uh, content awareness I, I will say it's just a user 
I will completely uncheck this. Do you want them this profile to be able to uh, create a, a new uh, NAT policies? If you want read and write for the NAT, for QS, for data loss, geolocation, you can select. You can check and uncheck. This will completely remove it. It will not even show them. If you check it, then you have two options. Do you want them to have read access or write access? So you can check whatever you want here. I'll go ahead and uncheck this. And once they have, once they are able to bring changes, do you want them to be able to install the policies on the gateways or not? So if you check this, if you uncheck it, they would not be able. If you check it, then they will be able to install, publish and install uh, new changes that they bring in the access control in, in any one of them and be able to install those policies. And do you want them to be able to uh, update the application control and URL filtering uh, or not? And in threat prevention, same. So this was the access control and this is the threat prevention blades. Uh, do you want them to be able to create new uh, threat uh, policy rules? You want to check read or write? Uh, so, so they are com uh, all self-explanatory. Same thing for the action install or IPS update. Uh, you can check them or you can uncheck them. So I want to limit this user uh, for many things. Even for settings, I will say just go ahead and read. In the others, you can further control the profile by uh, say, uh, unchecking. Let's say you, you want the the uh, the profile to not be able to create new objects. Uh, you should have only read to the um, new objects. You would not be able to create new objects, network host or time object or LDAP users. Do you want or not? Or HTTPS inspection or client certificates or maybe. Uh, user and management configuration uh, this is the mo log uh, monitoring and logs section uh, shall the user be uh, the profile be able to uh, check the the track logs or maybe monitoring or maybe HTTPS inspection or uh, management or let's say monitoring but I want I will check this but I don't want this uh, user uh, the profile to be able to uh, uh, bring changes to the monitoring section. I only want the profile to be able to have read access in the monitoring. So in the events and reports, you can uh, control whether the profile should be able to uh, create reports uh, in PDF uh, uh, from the smart event or not. And we have a management uh, where we can uh, control whether uh, the profile should be able to check the high availability operations if you have cluster going on uh, of the gateways uh, or if you want them to be able uh, to manage the uh, do check the management uh, API logins you can check and uncheck this here so I'll go ahead and say okay for this and I'll go back to my administrators so what I'll need to do is I'll have to let, let me publish this So I will check this to display me the uh, the Kamran user and I will go ahead and double click or right click edit. And here I will go ahead and modify the permission profile to my new created HQ profile. And I will say OK. And I will publish again. Uh, so to check this what I will do is I will go ahead and I'll go ahead and log into one of my other PCs because this is my PC right now and I have only one smart console access from this machine which is my host machine as well uh, to this management server so what I will do is I will uh, uh, go to Windows 10 and I will install a smart console on this uh, client PC as well so let me go to my Windows 10 PC. So I will access my policy management server, which is 
192.168.11.11 and I'll need to download uh, the smart console uh, application from the management server so admin admin123 and then I will need to install that so I can test the camera and user So I'll pause the video and install this. Uh, once it's installed, um, I will come back. So the installation has uh, completed. I will say finish. So let's log in as the new user, Kamran. And the password is test123. And the IP address is 11.11. .11. My management server. Uh, I will proceed with the new fingerprint and it's asking me to change the password so the old password is test123 and I will change it to test1234 change So I'm shown with the welcome screen. Uh, I'll close this. And if you come to the security policies, so you do not have permission to edit the policy and I even uncheck the read permission. So I'm not even able to see or change. Uh, if I go to logs and monitor, I would be able to see the logs because I un did not uncheck them. and if you see down here i am logged in as Kamran user and if i come to the host machine the smart console and if i come here to the sessions view sessions i should be able to see two users admin and Kamran. i have another one which is i guess the smart view application which is the browser this one so i have three sessions right now uh, the this smart console and the Kamran user and the uh, web user and if you want to terminate the session of the Kamran you can right click on it and disconnect him or take over if he has brought some changes and you don't want him to be able to install it you can uncheck that install policy and once he brings the changes you would be able to take over and then the changes would be shown here and then you would be able as an admin to publish and install it so uh, I can disconnect it I will disconnect him and here in the trusted clients you would right now i have any host that is able to smart console to my management server if you want it uh specific uh clients then you can add the clients here uh, the ip address or any or arrange uh, then you add them and they would be only able to access the uh, management server using smart console uh, so right now I don't want to create any next we have is advanced uh, in the advanced uh, we can um, uh, change the general properties of the permissions administrate and administrators so the authentication method default is checkpoint passwords if you want only OS passwords to be used so you can uh, select this or if you only want for all the users to be able to use radius then you check it in the global properties here and the default expiration date is never expires if you wanted to change you can change it here and if you wanted to give an about to expire in 14 days you can uh, check and set this here and if you wanted the user to be shown a notification before in advanced of 30 days then you can 
check and uncheck this or you can modify this days here if you have inactivity uh, of the smart console uh, for 10 minutes it will uh, log you out but right now it's it's not checked the default is unchecked so you can check this then if you have no activity for 10 minutes then it will automatically log you out and here you can uh, set the login restrictions if you have three failed uh, uh, attempts then it will lo lock your account for this amount of uh, time for this period 30 minutes uh, you can uh, modify this uh, and if you have a uh, failed uh, uh, authentication attempt then it will give you a display shall it give you uh, an informative uh, display message or not so you can check and uncheck and these are self-explanatory and the next we have is blades if you want to, to change the general properties of any of the blades you can uh, uh, come here and this is a session which we explained and here in advance you can uh, enforce the user to name their sessions so right now i haven't given a name so you can give a name here so let's say sick and uh, so if 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 this is checked then the users having smart console should will be enforced to give a name and description and here you can generate uh, session names so now if you publish this it will uh, it will not publish unless you give a description name and a description then you will be able to uh, apply that change and now if you come to revisions so there is this uh, change that the name was set and the description was hdf so it it will uh, in production be an intuitive uh, description in a name but i just give it right now so the admins would know that uh, who has brought the change and for what purpose and here you can create tags if you wanted to create tags and attach it to objects you can create here here in the preferences uh, right now my management server supports both ipv4 and ipv6 so if you only had ipv4 so you can change it here globally if you, uh, right now the fix, prefix length or the subnet mask are in cider notation if you wanted to change that to the subnet mask notation you can change it here here is the uh, i'll change that back so here is the login message so whoever logs into the smart console would be given a message so let's say warning uh, message let's say and this system is uh, for authorized use only uh, you can change it to unauthorized access prohibited let's say and you can uh, attach a logo a logo for it so so let's go ahead and attach a logo let's go with uh, let's pick this and uh, i'll publish this and i'll need to give it a name publish it so if i close this the next time if i log in if i try to log in to the smart console uh so it's admin one two three So I'm now getting this uh, message, the warning message. It would once again be an intuitive uh, message, but right now I just gave it uh, a message in a logo. So now I will be able to log in. And I'm logged in as admin user. And lastly, we have this main menu left uh, where we can manage policy in, policies and layers which we already discussed we can open the object explorer create new objects we, we can check the session details install policy from here we can verify the policy before installing it we can install the database or uninstall the threat prevention policy we can manage the uh, licenses and packages from here as well which would uh, take me to the smart dashboard and smart update so i can uh, manage the licenses from here and manage packages from here so let's get first you need to right click and get the gateway data 
so now once it takes it then you can manage the gaia or the security gateway packages these are the packages right now so i guess that is it for the smart console and uh, thank you for watching